today, Mr. Byron Bell. Thank you for coming after another hot day at practice. No problem, no problem. <laughs> so this is a, a Carolina recap. You're the first one on our new show this season where we're gonna, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the gridiron life and then Ash is going to talk to you about some, some fan questions. So right now you have been, congratulations on your recent left tackle assignment. And uh, I know you knew about that competition will be up for it once Jordan Gross retired. So did you, what was your preparation for this year like, considering that you knew you'd be having that possible switch? Uh, you know, going into it in the off season, you know, working out, uh, being prepared, make sure I'm, you know, I got all the tools ready for whenever I make the switch over from right to left. Uh, you know, getting advice from uh, guys who played the position in the past that have been on this team with uh, Travail, Warden, uh, Jordan Gross, of course, he played right tackle coming into the league. Then he transferred to left and telling me some of the, the good and the bad things he had to endure, you know, more good than bad. But he was just telling me, you know, helping me out along the journey, just letting me know it's not going to be easy. But, you know, he feel like I'm capable of doing the job. And at the end of the day, I feel like I'm capable of doing the job. But, you know, the transition has been going by pretty smooth uh, thus far. You know, last week for us was not a good week. But, uh, you know, the, the beauty about football is a new week. So, you know, we bounced back uh, this Thursday against Pittsburgh. Now, speaking of last week, I know after the game, uh, you are doing the interviews last week, you talked about how the old Byron Bell would have responded a little differently. So I've been dying to ask you, what is the old Byron Bell and what is the new Byron Bell? Uh, you know, in the first three years I've been here, I felt like, you know, I was a young guy. Um, I had to mature a lot, grow up. Um, you know, I think if something bad in the game would have happened, I feel like it would have affected me later on in the game. And I feel like the new Byron, uh, I had well, two bad plays at the beginning. And, but, you know, I had to keep playing, you know. So I went, uh, regrouped on the sideline, got back out there, uh, back out on the field and blocked him up. And I feel like the old Byron it would have affected me in the long run. But that was the, that's just something I learned through experience. You know, the only way you gain experience is through experience. So mm -hmm. I've been through those situations before. I've learned and heard from other guys how to, you know, how to cope with it and get the even kill. So I'm not trying to never be too high, never be too low, try to stay even key. And I feel like the new buyer is, you know, I, I, I learned that and I just matured. Okay. So what was it like, again, you knew that that left tackle position would be open and an opportunity for you. What was it like finding out about getting that opportunity? Because it seemed like you didn't even know that you unofficially heard about it and later on had to talk to coach about it. Yeah. How is that even possible? Some people don't even understand how that could be possible. Yeah, I found, <laughs> I found out. You know, somebody told me, you know, but they like, yeah, read this article. And I was like, yeah, the coach ain't told me. And, you know, the people write stuff on all these blog sites. And you really don't know it unless it come out of his mouth. And uh, I got the word, of course, I had the meeting. Uh, I had the media come up to me and bring it up. And, you know, I still didn't know. So, you know, coach, of course, Coach Bear, we talked about it. And, you know, he told me pretty much I earned it. You know, me and Nate were rotating. You know, Nate was giving me good competition at left. You know, you know he's the head of a player. But, you know, I just felt like I earned the spot. You know? And I feel like I'm proving, you know, to go out there and to get the job done. But, you know, it was an honor. And they, they, the team made me their starting little tap. I feel I feel like the team see me that I can anchor this line, you know. And like I told you, I'm still learning, you know. And Gross, if he's still around, talking to him is really beneficial for my career. And it helped me out this season just that he can give me the ins and outs. And I'm learning on the fly. So, you know, I'm, it's, I'm an honor to be the starting little tackle for the Carolina Panthers. Uh, Byron, this, this in Spartanburg, what I noticed from the team was there was a lot of what I felt like there was more people being leaders on that team, which I feel like just driven from Coach Rivera teaching you guys. Everybody wants to win now. So in training camp, you also led a breakdown, and there has been talk about your leadership. Was that something that you felt that was necessary because of that left tackle position or just you growing up as a player? Yeah, just growing up. Uh, just because I, if I was at right tackle, I feel like I would have to say something if I was a guard. It wouldn't matter. But, you know, of course, being, anchor, being an anchor in the line and somebody guys look up to when you're going on my fourth year, you know, I think vocally people will listen to me. Uh, I feel like I earned the right, you know, and, if, you know, and Coach Bear asked me to do that. You know, a lot of guys, especially like when I go out there and hop in, <laughs> especially TDT loves it. But, you know, and I try to give a positive message to let people know, uh, that, you know, this can be our year. We want it to be. You know, we work hard enough for it, and the outside distractions shouldn't, you know, distract us from what, what, what our ultimate goal is. And that's at the end of the day, is getting to the Super Bowl. You know, in my mind, you know, that's the ultimate goal is winning. Yeah. So I feel like we we do that. We should be fine. But you know, when I stepped out there, I really didn't know what I was going to say. I just let the, I just let the let the word use me. The guy, you know, bless my heart, and it, it worked out just fine. And 
went out there, gave the guys a good speech, no problem when I met in practice we had off camera. Yeah. Now speaking of that hop and Thomas Davis, that's when I first saw you do it was at the I think it's the Harvey Gantt Center. Uh, the song came on and you, you did your hop and I said, Man, I didn't know that guy could move like that, but also, I saw somewhere where Cam Newton said that he, you're one of the most athletic linemen that he's ever seen. Yeah, you know, just working on my footwork, you know, pledging, they taught us all these things, and, you know, just, you know, being more, I was I always felt like so I was credit to the bros on that. Oh, they go. Oh, yeah, they got some opportunity to incorporate. So, you know, they... Isn't it? Something like that. Yeah. But you know, my you know my dean pledge, he got me right, and you know work my footwork, and you know football got there right, and I feel like I feel like I was always an agile big guy, so you know I always thought I was a small guy. If I could if I could go back in time, I'd play point guard. <laughs> big guard, you all big guard coming yeah, out of court. Be, be like Rondo out there. Right? <laughs> yes, you know, but you know just work just working on my footwork, and I feel like that's one thing I've been doing a lot this offseason. Yeah, well, it shows. So I think it, I think it'll serve you well with that footwork, protecting his blind side. Um, I think you have some some fan questions, yes, right? Yes, we have questions from Twitter and Facebook. The first one is talking about how you walk everywhere and you're being a simple guy. So you want to talk about that? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, especially during the games. Uh, when I first got the shot, I talk about the games with the men. When I first got the shot, I didn't have no vehicle. Came in. What you mean? Of course, you're in the NFL. In the plane, I, you know, I'm rookie. You know, undrafted. You know, I'm just trying to make the team. And I'm staying at the hotel. Then I finally made. The, I made the cut. And you know, I'm still at the hotel. I find somewhere to stay. And I stayed right up on Moorhead. You know, I just used to walk every day. And then when I got a starting job, of course, it wasn't gross. <laughs> that he the one. He was like, you know, do you walk to work every day? I was like, yeah. He was like, B, you're playing now. You know, you, you gotta save your legs and you drive, you know. So I, I didn't want to, and I'm talking about we in the meeting room, he he called his guy at um the, uh, in Clover at the Chevrolet dealership out there and called him up and Robbie is his name. And uh, he was like, Robbie, we gotta get our guy by him. And, gotta get him the car. and I was like, if I'm gonna get something, I'm not getting the car, I get a truck. But still to this day, I drove over here, uh, of course, but Usually I wake up in the morning, or I be, we got to be at work at 8, I wake up around 6.45 and I head out the door around 17, five minute walk right up the street, and right. walk into work and after work, walk home. And I definitely drive, I definitely walk on game days because driving is not an option for me. Cause traffic, <laughs> I can't even get in my building without you know, getting stopped by the police, you know, because they got every road blocked off, so I think it's easier just to walk. And, you know, walking, people will notice me and they, you know, talk, take a picture, I don't mind, you know, or ask me how the game went. You know, I stop talking or whatever. You hang out. We got a real <laughs> on the way home. I stop and eat with you. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. So I don't mind walking. You know, and I walk everywhere. You know, and I, really nothing in my hometown. So walking was always a premium back in Greenville. So yeah, cool. All right, and um, I see that he is a person of faith. So can you talk about your faith? Uh, yeah, you know, growing up in the church uh, background, my mother made sure me and my brother stayed in the house of the Lord. And, and I'm talking about every Wednesday for Bible study and Sunday for church. And yeah, all revivals was mandatory. <laughs> Sunday school was mandatory. I mean, you name it, we were there. So, and, you know, my mother did that just because she just wanted to make sure our faith was strong, you know, and nothing got in our way when things were hard because life is even harder. You know, it's great stories in the book. You know, in First Timothy, we talk about Jonathan and David, and in Ephesians six, we talk about the full body armor of God. You know, it's very important for me. You know, and those things what keeps me keeps me even keel going in, waking up each and every day that I can wake up with my armor of God on, it, knowing that can't nobody defeat me. You know, but unless unless I allow them to. You know, and I think my faith that's what gets me going. I'm reading this book called Breakout by Joel Osteen. You know, it's a great book and. Uh, my offensive line coach, he gave it he gave it to the whole room. And uh, I, I began reading it. I feel like this whole transition to left tackle, I began to read the book. And it's just, it's just got a lot of remarkable stories about breaking out a new, in a new life. And you got the ups and the downs. And I'm reading it. And it's just like, you know, these things has happened on the course of my journey to the end of left, going into left tackle. So I feel like this, this is going to be the book I read for this season that keeps me at even keel. I feel like things are getting rough. Read and when things are even great for it, I'm still going to really read it to make sure that uh, you know, first before football, it's always God first, family, then you got football because uh, without Him, none of this is possible. Amen. 
All right, coming off of last season's 12-4 record and the players that have come and gone, how do you think this team stands? I think we stand pretty good. I think we match up well against a lot of uh, a lot of teams in this league, you know. So, and I think, and then especially in our division, you know, we got a couple guys from the previous uh, teams from our division, uh, from Atlanta, uh, and uh, the Saints were Roman, you know. Guys, we know the background of some of these teams now, you know. And but you know, I feel like we match up well. Uh, we lost some key key guys, you know. We lost the fail. Uh, we lost Steve, one of the vocal leaders, you know, legend of this team. Uh, you know, the Baltimore, but you know, we can't worry about those things. But we got the guys we got. I feel like I'm, I have confidence in all the guys. So, you know, we just got to go out there and perform. What we did last year, that was last year. Uh, we got to do this year. This is a whole new team. So it's going to be a whole new record. And, you know, and we just got to go out and do our, uh, do our thing and perform. It's a whole, you know, some players are gone, you know, like Jordan Gross is gone, retired. Travell Warren's retired. Jeff Van Gogh's retired. It's a new offensive line, you yeah. know. We still got the same backfield quarterback, receiving core is new. Um, on defense, everybody's you know, relatively still here. But in the back end with the safety position, it's different. But, you know, I feel like I feel like we match up well against any team, any, any Sunday in the uh, National Football League. I feel like we can go out there and perform at a high level. But what we did last year is in the past, so we got to move on and uh, grow, from, grow from what we did last year and build on that. All right, and then this one is not a question, but Greg Rusty wants to say, not a question, but tell Byron, just because a few heckle him doesn't mean he's hated. He has some more support than he thinks. Uh, <laughs> so you can, uh, that's uh, Rusty. So. Hey, we appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Rusty. All right, that's all from Twitter, Twitter and Facebook. All right, so once again, this is uh, Chris Jenkins along with Ashley and Byron Bell. We're going to do more of these shows this year. So if you have questions or players that you want to see on the show, just let us know. And uh, thank you guys for watching.